Good morning, bird brains. Welcome back to another video. We're out in the garage today, and uh, today we're going to be going over kind of the critical fasteners and just common things that you might need to repair on a bike on the side of the road. Reason being is that if you've watched previous episodes, you know that I recently picked up the Xfil 80 uh, sissy bar bag. Now we've got a couple of longer trips coming up at the end of this month. We're gonna have follow cars, uh, so we're kind of gonna be cheating, but I want to kind of use these as dry runs of a, you know, let's act like the follow cars aren't even there. Let's see if we can run through these road trips just like if it was just a couple guys on some bikes and what we have is what we have. So basically what I'm gonna be doing today is getting the bag on the bike, And then uh, running through, like I said, just the critical parts that might come loose or might break or might get damaged while on a road trip. See what size they are, see what tools I would need to repair or replace that, and then go down to the store and get that and fit it into the x 80 bag. So let's get started. All right, so first before I get too into this, I kind of want to get an idea of what I have to work with. So if you look in the bag here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, tall slots, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine small slots, as well as uh, two bags. I know I mentioned on a previous video I was going to use this as a first aid kit, but I actually got that taken care of with this little bugger here, and it straps on the outside of the bags. You can also mount up here. It's got molly straps, so I can pretty much mount it anywhere on the bike. But that's what we got to work with. So nine, seven, two bags. All right. So I did do a little research on the interwebs before I got too uh, into it, just to kind of get some ideas of maybe things I'm not thinking about. Someone put up a list of common fasteners. They put spark plugs, clutch inspection cover, primary chain inspection cover, uh, transmission drain plug. I don't think I would really need that because if that is loose, I'm probably already in too deep of an issue. And even if I fix it, I wouldn't have the fluid to put in it. So uh, fork drain screw, don't need that. Fork cap nut, and eh, probably don't need that. Air filter screw cover, that definitely is one that I wanted to focus on. And rear shock bolts. So on top of that, some things I can think of is the uh, pulley bolts especially on dynas, for some reason those like to back out. Uh, all the things to do with the control. So foot controls, things that would make them loose or come off, as well as hand controls and their adjustments. So clutch cable, throttle cable, um, brake levers, things like that. All right, so now I've got my list going on my phone here. I was gonna do it just a typical uh, notepad. Start getting sizes. Right, so first things first, I'm gonna focus on the uh, throttle cable first or the uh, clutch cable, I'm sorry. And that adjustment is down here at the bottom underneath this little booty here. There we go. All right, so these are two different sizes. You got one for the top and then one for this nut right here. So top and bottom is a half inch. No, so a half inch and a 9 16th for the clutch. Then we'll go ahead and move up top here to the throttle. Once again, you have your basic uh, two wrench system. Right, so the smaller one is three eighths. Actually, these are both three eighths. Moving on to the levers here. Uh, levers pop off with uh, just this C clip and then that pushes out. So don't really wanna put a pair of C ring or C clip pliers in the kit since I don't think it's that essential. So what I'm gonna mark down is just a flathead screwdriver because you can get it off with a flathead screwdriver, no problem. Getting it on, not so easy, but uh, if you can get it off, at least at that point, you can do what you need to do and then just drop the pin back in. You'll be good to ride to wherever you're going. Flat head, and I'm also gonna put Phillips head. Wait, do I even have any Phillips? I don't know, I'll leave that off for now. All right, so let's move on to some of the bigger important stuff like the pulley. Yeah, five eighths it is. And while we're down here, I'm just gonna go ahead and get a uh, sizing for this. I know I don't have a socket that fits this. One and one eighth on the opposite side. Yeah, one and a half on this side. All right, so there's our pulley stuff. Now let's move on to the air cleaner. So these are 12 points, so I need to make note of that. Here are the uh, ARP bolts, and they are five sixteenths. And uh, while we're here, I'll just go ahead and uh, get the foot controls on this side as well. So with how this is, is put on, this is 
pretty much just gonna have to stay there. All I'm gonna really measure are these two, uh, just because this is mounted back to the exhaust bracket. So if that's coming off, we have a whole nother issue on our hands. All right, so that is a T45 for the, for the top and a 916 for the bottom. Now, as I was down here, I remembered uh, the exhaust bolts up here, exhaust nuts. Those come off quite a bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure those while I'm here. I believe they are five, five, no. I can't remember what size they are. They might be half inch, but they have to be a deep socket. I'm gonna go ahead and grab an extender as well. I'll mark that on my list. Oh, first try. That is a half inch with an extender. Half inch deep socket with an extender. Aha, I just remembered I do need to put Phillips on here because the battery cover. For some reason they quick connect on the fuse box, but you need a Phillips for the other one. Doesn't make any sense. All right, now we're gonna move on to some of the littler stuff, more technical stuff like the derby cover, primary cover, uh, things like that. I also need to mark the front fork as well. I'll go ahead and do that first. Let's get the front fork. See if I remember correctly, I believe this is a one inch. Boom, one inch, huh? A lot of room on that. Try one size down, which would be a 15 sixteenths. Yeah, that's it, 15 sixteenths. Moving on to the derby cover here. Can't remember if these are metric or standard. They are standard and that's a three sixteenths. Now, is that gonna be the same size as those? It is, all right. Two birds with one stone there. Let's see if we're as lucky on the other side. All right, so that's 316. These are gonna be a little bit bigger. Don't think we'll need to really focus on those though. All these along that are all the same. So I think we'll be good with just the 316. And I want to check one more down here, and that's the uh, the crash bar. Oh no, that's way too big. Because in case this gets damaged, we might want to remove it. And that is an eight millimeter. All right, so I can't think of anything major that I'm missing. I know I don't have tools for everything. This is pretty much just the essentials that we're getting. Uh, for the wrenches, I have a half inch, nine sixteen, three eighths, and five eighths. Flathead Phillips head screwdriver. For the sockets, I have one and one eighth inch, one and one half inch. That could be socket or uh, wrench. I'm gonna see basically what I can do. Uh, 12.5 sixteenth, a T45, a 9 sixteenth socket, half inch deep socket, 15 sixteenth socket, and an extender, and then a 3 sixteenth as well as an 8 millimeter Allen or hex, whatever you call it. I also want to make a quick list of other things that I might need. Um, of course, zip ties are gonna be number one on that list. And I think I'm gonna put a electrical tape on there as well. And then of course, um, a pair of uh, needle nose and snub nose pliers, because that can always help. All right guys, so I think we have our list, at least a good starting point. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, head to the Toys R Us for Men, Harbor Freight. All right guys, did I get something? I got, got a lot of something. All right, so let's take a look at what we actually got here. All right, so I got a receipt in here somewhere. Here we go. Like I said, about $130. Granted, I got a little bit extra stuff than I needed, so in reality, about $120 worth of actual bike stuff here. So, got the uh, zip ties, necessity. I went ahead and got a 36-piece hex set. That's because, I mean, that's the size they come in. I got two of them because uh, I really like how these were organized. It had all the size and everything listed on here. And the ones that I have here in the garage are not, they're not size. So I don't know what size they are. So I went ahead and got one for the garage. Uh, I got this package of extenders. Obviously this one is a bit of excessive down here, but I now have more for the garage. So I'm pretty much probably just gonna keep this one, this uh, second one here. All the rest will be kept in the garage. Uh, eight inch needle nose pliers. I got a two-in-one wide mouth adjustable wrench. I'll go over that in a second. 
I got this 34 piece ratcheting screwdriver set. Um, I caught this for the Phillips head and the flat head. Granted, this is not going to be the most ideal tool to pry stuff off, but I think in a pinch it would work. It also comes with uh, 1 4 5 16 11 32 3 8 7 16 half inch, uh, quarter inch drive, as well as a 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 millimeter drive. It also has 15 bits and three star. The T20 and T25 can be used on the hand controls uh, to tighten and loosen uh, where the controls are. So I feel like that was gonna be a plus. Uh, plus you only have to carry one grip. All these little bits can go in those bags and uh, not have to take up any more space. So kind of like a two in one, kind of just like a last minute uh, ditch effort. It was the same price as two screwdrivers. So I decided screw it, might as well go with this one. Got some, uh, oops. Got some electrical tape, voltage grade, 600 volts. That should be plenty. I also got this three pack of adjustable wrenches. Once again, I'll go over that here in a second. Got a nine piece combination wrench set. This has sizes from one quarter inch all the way up to three quarter inches. Uh, we only need about three or four of these, but like I said, the rest will just stay in the garage and have extra wrenches here. Also got this 3 8 drive uh, star point. This was for the uh, T45 here. That's the one we need for the foot controls. And then uh, some of the other ones will probably just be kept here in the garage. I know the T20 uh, is used a couple times around the bike, but I don't think they're anything critical. Then to power all those, I got a, a 3 8 inch swivel head ratchet. So it does go vertical and horizontal. I decided that would probably be better for, you know, a little bit more versatile. I got a pair of uh, eight inch snub nose pliers. And then last but not least, I got a set, a 10 piece deep wall color coded socket set. Uh, the reason I got the color coded is because that's the only ones that they had that had the sizes I need and were deep socket. I went ahead and just got all deep socket because deep socket will work on non-deep socket applications, but deep socket applications will not work with a regular socket. So I decided better to have kind of like that two in one mentality and it got all of the sizes that we need. This one in particular has sizes from five sixteenths all the way up to seven eighths. So looking back at my list here, the only thing I was not able to get was the 12.5 uh, sixteenths for the air cleaner. Now that's definitely one I would wanna get, but uh, they didn't have anything that wasn't, you know, like 25 bucks that had that in that. But I'm gonna go ahead and take a look in one of my old socket sets and see if I have one. So give me one second. This was the uh, first toolkit I ever had. <laughs> Got this back in high school. So 5 16th, 12 point right there, boom. But uh, is that 3 8 drive? It is 3 8 drive, sweet. So that should click right on there. Perfect. This toolbox, like 10 years later, still coming in handy. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is get all these tools unpackaged and out of their uh, plastic stuff and get it back into the bag to kind of see what we're dealing with as far as size and space. All right, so that took forever. So what you see here in the middle of the table is what we actually need. Now granted, there is some stuff that we don't need because I've got the entire thing of Allen wrenches here and I also have a few more of those adjustable wrenches back there. But if you look over here, we did get quite a bit of stuff that we didn't need. So that $120 bought us uh, way more than we actually needed. But essentially what I'm gonna do is try to get all of this stuff into the bag and then whatever room I have left over, I'll start incorporating what I feel is most important or most useful out of this stack. Because of course other people are gonna be riding with me so their bikes might have different stuff. But I'm gonna focus on myself first obviously because you know I'm a narcissist. But let's go ahead and uh, get this stuff packed up in this bag. Actually, one second before I get to that. The reason I got adjustable wrenches is actually for the, uh, the bigger nuts on the axle. So as you can see, this is gonna be plenty big for this side and it should be just enough for this side, hopefully if I measured correctly. Yep, there you go, perfect. Now obviously not the most ideal tool, uh, especially with them being Harbor Freight, but uh, for space saving, this is going to be a lot better than having one of big giant wrenches. Plus I couldn't find uh, a wrench in this size 
by itself. You had to buy like a pack and it was like $54. So I was like, nope. So uh, th that will cover me for all the axle stuff. Plus with it being adjustable in case I miss anything, that'll help uh, get us into those spaces. That's why I also got some of the smaller adjustables. So I'll probably just keep this one. The other two will probably stay out. Actually, no, I need to keep the bigger one for to hold the nut. So I'll probably, I'll probably keep all three if I've got the space, but let's go ahead and pack up this bag. All right, so I got everything in the bag. Zipper nice and tight, uh, easy to zip up as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it and show you exactly what I got in there. So as you can see, no stress on the zippers. Flop. Uh, zip ties didn't quite have a spot. Uh, they're pretty long, so I just kind of smushed them in there. But up at the top, I was able to fit every single one of the deep sockets minus the uh, the seven eights, but that'll be covered by an adjustable wrench. So that was not a necessity. I got all the necessities in there. So let me go ahead and just say that right off the bat. Got all of the deep sockets up here on top. I got my three wrenches that I needed here, as well as the small, medium, and large adjustable wrench, a ratchet and extender here. Uh, in this pocket, I just kind of kept the small stuff. So uh, the stuff, all of the attachments for that ratcheting screwdriver are in there, as well as the uh, T45 and the 516 12 point and the electrical tape. And then in this big bag, I was able to get the, uh, the screwdriver, both sets of Allen keys, both sets of pliers, as well as the uh, large adjustable wrench. So this little bag actually holds quite a bit. So the next thing that I wanted to test is with this bag loaded with tools, is it going to be able to be felt through this bag pad? So let me hop on the bike real quick. Now granted, this uh, this bag is not completely cinched down. I just did it just to kind of get it on the bike. So of course this can be moved around and adjusted. It can also be put on the luggage rack, but I wanna utilize this backrest as much as possible uh, because if you're going on a longer trip, that can definitely cut down on the fatigue. So first off, I have to lean way back to get it, but I don't feel any tools. Nothing. I just feel a, a back pad. It's pretty nice, man. If only I had cruise control, I just... Now granted, there's nothing else in this bag right now. So if I were to stuff it full of clothes or anything else I'd be taking, it probably would be closer to my back. But uh, yeah, I can't, I can't put my back on it and keep my hands on the handlebars right now. So I guess that's a plus maybe, I don't know. All right guys, so that's pretty much gonna do it. She's pretty much ready to uh, hit the road now. Uh, still extremely happy with the quality of this bag. Um, I can't wait to get on the road and actually start testing it. Also, I did wanna address one thing. I know a lot of people are gonna be in the comments saying, oh, Harbor Freight's garbage. That stuff will break on you the first time. First off, no one likes you. Secondly, I don't care. These are emergency tools. These are tools I hope to never even touch. I literally bought a second set of tools. I obviously have, I know people are gonna say craftsmen, but I have good craftsman tools that have never had an issue with. So I don't see the sense in spending, you know, 400, $500 on something that I can get for 120 bucks that I might not ever use, but I'm happy with it. I think that it will uh, come in handy if we need it. I think it'll handle the job just fine. So if you have any questions about uh, this bag or any of the tools or anything like that, please go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. Other than that, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.